Plane Trigonometry by Nathan O'Niles. So trigonometry is a subject that is studied usually in college here in the US. People usually have to take a college algebra class before they take trigonometry. And it's a big jump. It's a big jump because you're used to doing algebra. Even before college algebra, there's other courses you can take. You know, intermediate algebra, you know, pre-algebra. People do algebra in high school, and a lot of people do trigonometry in high school too. But in college, there's a full course dedicated to it. And it gives people a hard time. So this is an old book on trigonometry. It's called Plain Trigonometry. It was written by a man named Nathan O'Niles. Who is Nathan O'Niles? Well, I actually don't know. Um, I mean, he's the person who wrote the book. It talks a little bit about him here. It says he was an associate professor, Department of Mathematics, U.S. Naval Academy. Here's the information on Nathan O'Niles. That's what we have. I tried to do some research on Nathan because I think this is an interesting book. And I couldn't find much. The book is expensive. So I, I don't think this is a book that you, know, you should run out and buy um, you know, if you want to learn trig. It's kind of pricey. And all the copies I found were used, so apparently the book is out of print. I looked on Amazon and I found a few different listings and all the prices were fairly high. Like this book is not $10. No, no, no. Which is kind of strange. It's kind of a, a high price book. And that's what led me to wonder like who, who was Nathan O'Niles? But this book is interesting for other reasons too. It's an older book. So to me that makes it interesting and it's got a really good smell. But the person who used it, his name was Richard and he used it in the 60s. And I know this because it is signed. There we go. July 1, 1963 to September 1, 1963. So that's like a, a summer quarter maybe, right? Maybe it's like a quarter, right? Instead of semesters, it's quarters perhaps. And he used it in that summer of 1963. So in the summer of 1963, Richard used this book and he wrote in the book. He wrote in it extensively. Here he wrote the words omit. And you can see writing like even further in the book, which, which makes it kind of interesting. I worked out a few of the examples this morning from this book and I found the typo. Already I found the typo. There was an error where the author did the addition wrong. The numbers should have added to 170 and they added to 169. And we all know that the square root of 169 is 13. What's the square root of 170? Not so nice. So that completely changed the answer. It was a simple problem where they were converting a, a complex number into polar form. Something really simple. But there was an error in one of the examples. And it was the key example. It was like, I think it was the first example in that section. So there are typos. There's at least one. As far as answers, you know, the book does have some answers, but not many. In any case, though, I think this book is really interesting. Uh, it's interesting, again, because one, the price. Why is it so expensive? Two, um, the person who used it signed it and he worked through it extensively. Here he wrote, stop on page 172. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's a cool book. It does have some explanations and some sections that you won't find in modern books. So it does give you a different perspective when it comes to trigonometry. So that is definitely true of this book. So as a collector of books, I definitely think it's worth having. And yeah, I just think it's a cool book. It's a good size, smells good. Yeah, it's fun. Let, let's take a look. Let's take a closer look at this strange book from the past, right? This is such an old book and it has so much history and it just, yeah, it's a piece of history. Let's take a closer look. Plain Trigonometry by Niles, really old book. So here's the person who Used the book. I'll cover his name. His name is Richard and it has his address there. So I'm going to cover that July 1, 1963 
to September 1, 1963. Plane trigonometry, here you can see who Nathan O'Niles was, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, U.S. Naval Academy, Annapolis, Maryland, and says lecturer in mathematics, McCoy College, the John Hopkins University, Baltimore, Maryland. Trigonometry. Here's the copyright, 1959. Wow, right? Third printing, 1962. So, so Richard used this book when the book was new, right? Because he used it in 63. So this was a new book that he was using at the time, pretty much for his course. This was the new book for his course that he took in California. Printed in the United States of America. Here's the preface. It's meant to give a modern flavor to trigonometry. Here it talks a little bit about learning trig. Trigonometry is not a difficult subject. It is logical and a study requires that you do a conscientious job. When studying mathematics, read carefully the discussion and the illustrative examples before attempting to do the problems. In reading mathematics, read the equations and symbols as though they were written out in words. After all, they are only symbols used to denote certain ideas. Play by the rules and you win. Violate the rules, you are penalized. Good luck to you in your study of trigonometry, Nathan O'Niles. Here's a brief look at the contents. Very similar to what you would see in modern books, but there are some differences. Fundamental concepts, mainly in the sections themselves. Trigonometric functions, angles. The right triangle. Trigonometric functions, real numbers. So, again, fairly consistent with new stuff, but there are some different, different things. Variations and graphs of the trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions, composite angles, logarithms, oblique triangles, inverse trig functions, trigonometric equations. This is interesting here, 11-4, equations of the form a sine theta plus b cosine theta equals c. There, there's a whole section on that, how strange. And then vectors and complex numbers. Then we have some appendices and then answers to exercises. The answers are not complete. Um, there's, just, there's just some answers. Uh, one, two, three, well, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, there's no three, four, six. So there's a lot missing. Like even in the first section, you just get eight and nine, right? So you, you don't get much uh, in terms of answers in this book. Roots of complex numbers. Smells really good. I just got to give it a whiff here. Just... Oh, so amazing. So amazing. Yeah, just an old book on trig. Um, it's got decent explanations. Here's Richard with more writing. Finish this chapter. Lorentz transformations? Do. He had to do all of these, apparently, back in 1963. In the summer of 1963, when Richard used this book. Look at all that effort. Do all. To next page. No joke, right? Grinding Mathematics in 1963, so cool. Let's look at that section I was talking about. I think it was 11, four maybe, where there was that example. Yeah, this, equations of the form. This is not something you see, this type of explanation, this type of argument in a modern book, right? You see a whole process for solving these types of equations. Just basically uses like a formula, a laic type thing. He derives some procedure, then he uses it to do the exercises, which is kind of cool, right? which is kind of cool if you've never done it, you've never seen it, you probably haven't. But again, you can't check all your answers because there's not answers to every problem. But, oh look, they didn't cover vectors and complex, not at all. So this is something that's definitely covered. I mean, I guess that's what he means by not at all, not covered. It's definitely covered in classes today. When I've taught trig, I've always covered it. It's actually really easy to teach it. It's one of the easier topics and uh, vectors come up in physics. A lot of the modern books have applications with force, just like this does. Here we go. So this does even have it. In the exercises though, I don't know if it has examples of physics. A lot of the modern books will have 
examples with physics. I don't see any here. Yeah, I don't see any here. Interesting book though. I thought I'd make this random video to show you an old trig book. Definitely not the best book for beginners, but just a nice old book. Unusually expensive for an old book. Out of print. And this one was used by a man named Richard in 1963. Kind of cool. Just some random book from my collection. Just thought I would show you. If you want to learn trig, I do have a course on trig and other math courses. Check out my website, mathsorcerer.com. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting subscribe today if you want to. Till next time, good luck. Take care. Keep doing mathematics.